Fishing Texas rig baits during the spring, that's what we're talking about today. I, there's a lot of questions. I see them all the time on our forums because there's so many different creature baits out there, right, that you can Texas rig and there's a lot of different ways to fish them, seemingly. But I'm going to make it simple for you. I'm going to I'm going to break it down to a couple of different ways you can fish them no matter what creature bait you're throwing as long as it's Texas rig in the springtime from pre-spawn all the way to post-spawn. So let's start off with uh, my rigging. First thing I want to tell you about what I do is I take a uh, I use a 72, 7 foot 1, 7 foot 2 medium power fast action rod bait casting. That is your jack of all trades, your Swiss Army knife of bass fishing. You can use that for a variety of different lures and techniques, but it works especially well for worm fishing. Matter of fact, I have several just for dedicated for worm fishing. That's how good it is. So get one of those rods, pair it up with a, a reel with a, a lower gear ratio, like a 6-3 to 1, 6-2 to 1 gear ratio. And then I use Invisix fluorocarbon uh, that's cigar line. Okay. The reason I do that is 15 pound. I don't use braid and I'm not using any leader or anything like that. The reason is that fluorocarbon line is much more versatile. You can use that and just about, you can throw it pretty much in anywhere and not have any problem with it. Braid is more specific uh, and braid has a few issues with it. If you're throwing in a lot of woody cover, flooded woody cover like bushes, trees, uh, some docks, uh, you get a heavy fish on there. Braid's known to kind of cut into that wood because it's soft and it gets stuck in there. Where Fluorocarbon won't do that as much. Same thing with uh, in if you're fishing around a lot of rocks like riprap and such, braid tends to get fray, frayed easier and nicked up easier than fluorocarbon. You, know, you would think it'd be the other way around, but no, that's not the case. So I just like to use fluorocarbon for this stuff, this type of fishing. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll rig the worm or the, uh, the the Texas rig bait. I'll use a three out hook, three out extra wide gap hook that's from you know gamakatsu makes a great hook for that just a normal size not a not a flipping hook or anything like that just a regular hook and the weight is i'll use a 3 8 ounce weight tungsten weight that's your standard size weight now these these baits are pretty bulky they often have appendages on them they uh, slow movely, slowly move through the water column so a heavier weight like a 3 8 ounce weight is what you'll need to give that nice steady slow while still getting the appendages to move around as it's falling so that's like my standard setup, my standard go-to setup. So let's talk about during the, the spring, throughout the spring period and how I fish it. Let's start off with the pre-spawn period. Pre-spawn is where, for me is like when the temperatures are in the upper 40s, getting into the mid to upper 50s. That range is pre-spawn. And in the early pre-spawn, when the water's really cold, that's when I'll fish real slow. Oftentimes what I'll do is I cast out, let the, let the lure hit the bottom and here what I'm doing is I'm fishing 10 to 15 feet deep. Sometimes I'll fish deeper depending if the, the fish haven't moved up yet. I may have to go 25 feet deep. Fishing points, main structure, main point structure, think main lake structure, main lake points. Throw it out and watch the bait fall. Watch where the line enters the water. You want to give it a lot of slack. Don't cock the reel after it hits the water. Instead pull some line out of the reel so it is slack line and watch that bait just fall through the water column. Watch that line. That line sometimes will make a little twitch or a bounce. Well, that's a fish grabbing it. That's how you detect a strike. Or sometimes uh, it'll it'll start to, to to suddenly accelerate as it's peeling going into the water. Like well, fish grabbed it, swimming away with it now. Uh, things like that. Watch for those little changes, and sometimes they're subtle, and that often means a, a bite. But once it hits the bottom, reel up on it, feel, and sometimes your line's swimming off. That's a fish that's got it. So set the hook. But if there isn't a fish there. Again, when the water's really cold, I like to drag it on the bottom. Just give it slow pulls. And I like to use it with the rod, not with the reel, because the rod, I can tell how far I've pulled that, that bait. So just, just kind of pull it back, a couple of inches, three, five inches at the most, and pause it. Reel up that slack and just wait. And that pause can be anywhere from five to 30 seconds long. But what you're doing here is, is you're giving the fish time to examine it, come up to it. Sometimes they're a little skittish uh, early in the spring when they first come up, so they're not as uh, willing to bite something that looks a little unusual to them. They might actually be spooked by it. So a slow presentation. Also, with the water being really cold, a lot of bait fish and such, they're not super active, so you're trying to match the uh, activity level of the forage. So just drag it, pause it, 
long pause and then drag a little bit more again, long pause, drag a little bit more, long pause. And oftentimes the fish will just pick it up. You'll just see the line just start to swim away. Like, fish. <laughs> it's amazing how that works. Uh, as the water warms up, then I, I like to you know, throw it out there and let it drop again. You're just watching for that bite. And once it hits the bottom, let it pause again for another, you know, five to 30 seconds, but then lift the rod up, you know, about a foot or so, lift it up, about up to the nine o'clock, 10 o'clock position, let it drop again on slack line. Watch for that bite. Reel back up, give it a long pause, pick it back up again, let it drop. So you're just letting that bait slowly hop its way towards you. And a lot of times that generates bites. And then the third way I like to fish that, uh, that creature bait is I like to throw it out and I swim it back. Reel it real slow, right along the bottom or right over the tops of weeds and just let those appendages just flap and flutter, make it look like something swimming along. And just a straight, steady retrieve is all you need. And oftentimes you'll get a bite that way. Uh, it's, a, it's great, especially if a, if a crankbait's too aggressive or too fast or making too much noise and the fish aren't biting it. Or if you're fishing crankbaits and you got a lot of fish following it, but it won't, they won't bite it, pick up that Texas rig creature bait, throw it out there and fish it like you would a crankbait, just a little bit slower. And a lot of times you'll get a bite. There's a, there's a tip from your Uncle Glenn, <laughs> you know. And one other way to do it, when you're reeling it, you can also yo-yo it. You know, bring the rod tip up and ring it down. You can pause it just like you would a crankbait. Try those type of different retrieves, and you'll be surprised at how many how many times you get bit that way. A lot of guys don't fish Texas rig plastic baits that way, so it's something that the fish don't normally see. You tend to get more bites that way. Now, as we move into the spawn, I change things up a bit. The spawn, the fish are on beds. They're locked down. They're a little spooky, you know, because they are shallow. So any quick movements or something around them might, might spook them off the bed. So here I'll go weightless or real lightweight, maybe an eight ounce sinker. And I'll put it on spinning gear. Again, I'm using a seven foot one, seven foot two, medium power, fast action spinning rod. Uh, I'll lighten up the line to maybe 10 pound fluorocarbon line. And here what I'm doing is you want to cast past the bed and with that real light weight it's just going to plop down lightly on the water you don't make a big splash down sometimes you can fish it completely weightless but you're looking for this nice tantalizing fall if it falls just like a stick and doesn't really move the appendages don't do it then maybe you might want to add a little bit of weight because you want those appendages to make it look alive throw it out there past the bed and then just kind of Slowly reel it a little bit so it swims towards the bed and, and lands on the bed if you, if you can do that. A lot of times the fish will turn on it and hit it before it even hits the bed. The key to that is staying far away from the bed. You want to make long casts. The clearer the water it is, the further away you want to be from the bed, especially if you're on the shore. Even the vibrations of you walking on the, on the shoreline or hitting, walking through the bushes and stuff, that can tip the fish off that you're there. So making longer casts, staying away from the bed, making long casts past the bed and working it over to it with a weightless or very lightly weighted Texas rig bait is the best way to uh, get those fish to bite. Now, once you get past the spawn, I go back to that bait casting rig, again with a quarter ounce of actually three eighth ounce tungsten weight. And I'll do the same retrieves I did in the pre-spawn, except I'll, I'll swap out that slow dragging, uh, 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 slow dragging retrieve, and I'll replace that with uh, swimming on the surface. Here you might use, oh, I'll say, a. I might wait, lighten up a little bit on the weight, use a quarter ounce weight, but you want to throw it back and just swim it across the surface, just reel it nice and easy and just swim it across the surface. And it just kind of gurgles and makes a little bit, it's, it's, it's more subtle than a buzz bait. And in the post spawn part of the season, that is when the fish are really aggressive. They really do hit top water a lot. And this could be a dynamite way to catch fish, especially if a lot of guys are out there throwing poppers and, and buzz baits. This is a presentation the fish don't see that often, and you can cash out on it, man. You can, you can load the boat and catch a lot of fish that way. Uh, so that's swimming it on the surface, swimming it subsurface. That's another way to do it, just like again with the crankbait. And then I go back to the hopping it as well, dropping it vertically fall, let it hit the bottom. But here I'm not waiting that five to 30 second wait. I'll let it wait, you know, sit a second or two and then lift it back up and let it drop. And here I only do like two, three drops 
and then reel it back in and make another cast. I don't work it all the way back to the boat. Typically, if the fish are going to bite it at that time of year, they're going to do it on the first drop or two or the first hop or two, uh, and then you just move on. So you can save yourself a lot of time. You're not wasting your time working the bait in unproductive areas. So that's how I fish Texas rig baits. I hope that helps for more tips and tricks like this. Wait, hold on, hold on. If you watch the video this long, then you for sure don't want to miss these two videos. All right now, this one I handpicked for you because I think this is the one you're going to want to see next. But this is the one that YouTube thinks that you should you should watch. Either way, I'm in both of them, so I'll see you in a few seconds.